Hey friends, it's Maggie, and welcome back to another live stream. Since a lot of kids are, all, are home from school again today, I decided to read another book. So let's start reading Amelia Bedelia Means Business. Chapter 1. Money is the Root. Amelia Bedelia never meant to lead a pack of dogs on a wild goose chase. She never meant to steal something and then sell it. She never meant to make someone look bad, very bad, or lead a parade astray, or even stop on a piece of perfectly delicious cherry pie. But all that and more actually happened. Amelia Bedelia needed to earn some money. The truth was, Amelia Bedelia needed to earn a lot of money. Maybe that was the real problem. Earning some money would have been easy. Amelia Bedelia could have planted petunias for a neighbor or fed a cat while its owner was on vacation. But such small jobs would never have earned the wheelbarrows full of money Amelia Bedelia needed to make. It all started innocently enough when Amelia Bedelia decided that she wanted a new bike. But then one thing led to another, until the mayor of Amelia Bedelia's town finally said, That Amelia Bedelia, she means business. Here's what happened. Chapter 2. The Bike Amelia Bedelia adored her bike. It was a great bike. It was fast and dependable, and she had learned to ride on it. She could tell you how it had gone very dead. She could tell you what had chipped each fragment of paint from the frame and what, and what had made those rusty scratches on the chrome. She could match each insult to her bike to an injury on her body. Scabs on her knees, scrapes to her elbows, bruises on her shins, and a tiger, tiny sliver of, the, of a scar under her chin. Amelia Bedelia had parked her bike at the bike rack. She was about to go into school when she saw some kids buzzing around Suzanne Scroggins. Suzanne was a new girl this year. She told all her friends to call her Susie. Amelia Bedelia still called her Suzanne. Even though Amelia Bedelia sat right next to her, Amelia Bedelia had never figured out why Suzanne was so crabby and bossy. Every day, every day except for today, of course, since it was the last day of school before vacation, Amelia Bedelia noticed the difference right away. Suzanne was smiling from ear to ear. Then Amelia Bedelia saw why. Suzanne had a new bike. It was in the most beautiful bike in the world. Amelia Bedelia was speechless, but she didn't make the sound. It was the takes your breath away inhaling sound that you can't control when you see something amazing. The bike was painting a rich emerald green with metal flakes that sparkled like diamonds floating just beneath the smooth enamel surface. Gleaming chrome reflected the morning sun, dazzling Amelia Bedelia's eyes. She tried to look away, but she could not take her eyes off the bike. It hurt to look. It hurt even more not to look. Every inch of the bike was so streamlined that it looked as it was still moving, even after Suzanne had parked it. From the back of her throat, Amelia Bedelia managed to croak. Nice bike. Thank you, said Suzanne. But bikes are bikes. That's true, said Amelia Bedelia. Just two wheels with spokes. And a lot of gears, said Suzanne. I don't have any gears, said Amelia Bedelia. Two tires, definitely, said Suzanne. Not really, said Amelia Bedelia. I don't get too tired without gears. Brakes, said Suzanne. Sometimes my bike breaks, said Amelia Bedelia. Then my dad fixes it. The bell rang. It was time to go inside. As Suzanne locked her bike at the rack, she said, Don't forget to lock up your bike, Amelia Bedelia. That's when the truth hit Amelia Bedelia. She had never locked up her bike. She didn't have to, because it, was, well, it wasn't worth stealing. Who would want it after seeing the bike? Amelia Bedelia didn't, that's for sure. Amelia, everyone followed Suzanne into school. 
leaving Amelia Bedelia to ponder the difference between the two bikes. She felt bad for her bike. She felt bad about feeling about her bike. She felt bad, period. Finding out that life is unfair was no way to start the day. And it was certainly no way to start the school vacation. That afternoon after school, Amelia Bedelia avoided everyone, even her friends. She hid behind the dumpster, listening to the laughter and the jokes and the cries of, have a good break. Finally, Amelia Bedelia got on her bike and rode home. She took the way back, she took the back way so no one would see her. Chapter three, there but for the grace. And please, said Amelia Bedelia, bring me a new bike. Amen. After she finished saying grace, Amelia Bedelia dove into her supper. Her parents did not begin to eat. They just looked at each other. Her mom arched. An eyebrow as high as it would go. Her dad opened his eyes super wide for a couple of seconds, as if someone had stepped on his stomach. Had Amelia Bedelia had been praying, paying attention and said twirling her spaghetti and dreaming about bikes, she would have seen the secret eye talk that all parents use to communicate with other, their, uh, each other when their kids are present. Amelia Bedelia's father unfolded his napkin, spread it on his lap, and then asked, so anyone seen any nice bikes lately? Amelia Bedelia sat up straight without having to be told and exclaimed, you wouldn't believe the bike I saw today. She spent the next 10 minutes giving her parents inch by inch description of the most beautiful bike in the world, down to the last spoke. Goodness, said Amelia Bedelia's mother, a bike that special must cost an arm and a leg. Amelia Bedelia shook her head. I would never pay that much, she said. You need both your arms to steer a bike and like that, and both legs to pedal it. That's a good point, said her father. You certainly need to be big and strong to ride a bike like that. Yes, said her mother. To take a bike, bite of your broccoli before it gets cold. Amelia Bedelia took an extra large bite. How far away is Christmas? She asked. A long way away, said her mother. Amelia Bedelia took a much smaller bite of her broccoli. How far away is my birthday? Even farther, said her father. Did I get all of my allowance this week? Every penny, said her father. But remember, you have to pay me if you talk with your mouth full. Amelia Bedelia closed her mouth, she chewed and chewed, and she swallowed and said, can I get an early Christmas present and an early birthday present? A new bike is the only thing you'd have to give me, ever, for years and years. Well, said her mother, I think it would be better if a bike wasn't just given to you. Amelia Bedelia looked down at her plate. Her stomach hurt. Now she wished had, she had not eaten any broccoli at all. Since she was looking at her plate, she once again missed the eye talk between her parents. This time her mom's eyes grew wider while both of her dad's eyebrows reached arched high enough to raise the ceiling. I agree, said her dad. You should work for a new bike and earn the money for at least half of it. Amelia Bedelia smiled and looked at her parents. Which half costs more, she said, the front half or the back half? They don't sell bikes that way, honey, said her mother. Then her father said, I'll tell you what. What, said Amelia Bedelia. What about what? What do you have to tell me about what? Can we please stop talking about my bike instead of what? Amelia Bedelia's father patiently refilled his water glass. We can't afford to buy a fancy bike like that, he said, but I can meet you halfway. Amelia Bedelia slid off, slid off her chair. She walked exactly halfway around the table and stood there. Her mom and dad stared at each other, then back at her. Okay, Amelia Bedelia, here I am. Are you going to meet me halfway or not? Amelia Bedelia's dad stood up and walked halfway around the table to meet her. He said, we will pay for half the cost of a new bike, but you have to pay for the other half. He held out his right hand. Amelia Bedelia looked at it. I can't pay you my half tonight, she said. Of course not, her father, said her father. 
Tonight we'll make an agreement in business. When you agree to do something, you shake the other person's hand. When Nilly Vidilly grabbed his wrist and shook it up and down as hard as she can. Up and down and up and... Owie, said her father. Not like that, sweetie, said her mother. This is how you shake hands, her mother showed her how to shake hands with her father. Make it a firm handshake, she said. Your hand shouldn't feel like a dead fish or a wet noodle. Then her parents gave each other a hug. You should probably leave out the hug part, sweetie, said her mother. Why? asked Millie Bedelia. I love that. She took her father's hand and then her mother's hand. And then Millie Bedelia hugged both of them together. Family hug, she hollered. When they all hugged out, Millie Bedelia's father said, Now, Millie Bedelia, let's have dessert and talk about how you're going to earn half of your bike. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I really hope to see you tomorrow on our live stream. See you later.